Ten Challenge 2007. The game was at Duke. Greg Paulus, 18 points. Duke routes Wisconsin, 82-58. Two years later, 2009, here, Trayvon Hughes, a career-high 26 points, and the Badgers take down the Blue Devils, 73 to 69. Tonight, we've got a top five matchup for you. Number four, Duke. Number two, Wisconsin, as we check out the Sonic Showdown. The Blue Devils have the best record of any program in either conference in the ACC Big Ten Challenge, and they can really, really fill it up. And Wisconsin, Jay, they're just doing what they do. They're efficient offensively. They take care of the ball as Okafor slams it in to make it 6-4. to four. They don't foul. They get to the free throw line. It's a, a typical Bo Ryan team this year. But uh, maybe we shouldn't say it. it's a typical Bo Ryan coach team, but probably the most talented team that he's had. Well, Duke's got nine McDonald's All-Americans, and Bronson Koenig of Wisconsin said, well, they've got seven guys that were Wisconsin high school All-Stars. <laughs> Duke doesn't have any of those. <laughs> But this is a really talented team that's really well schooled, and they play well together. Tap no good, and then down with the rebound is Okafor. All of the points in this game have been scored by the centers. And scored the way that they like to play, with Okafor near the basket, Kaminsky pulling Okafor away from the bucket and scoring with threes. I think they have to continue to look to get the ball inside to Julio Okafor. Good job to look for the ball and look for the angle there. Cook steps in, kicks it. Jones rises up for a three, and the rebound to Gossett. This is Koenig, a sophomore. Comes off the bench early for Jackson off, and it figures to be his team next year. Jackson's a senior. Gossett's a senior. Koenig doesn't get the bounce. Some cold shooting early for both teams. Anytime Kaminsky sets that back pick up top, and he gets a switch with a guard, he's got to take that guy right into the post. And Quinn Cook, who's having an outstanding senior season, gives Duke the lead. Cook comes in at better than 15 points per game and shooting 43% from three. Well, how well has he played? Career highs in field goal percentage and points. He's an outstanding basketball player. And Mike Krzyzewski said he's, he's led even better than he's played. Duke in for three. And the tap out by Kaminsky. Smart play. He probably could have grabbed that, but knocking it back out. Oftentimes, we'll go to an open three-point shooter. At least it gives you that opportunity. Kaminsky with Jefferson on him. Now Dukin's open. If the seven-footer doesn't hit the three, the 6'10 guy will. They went for the double team. The rotation had to come from Jalil Okafor. That's a long way for him to recover to an open three-point shooter, especially one that's 6'10 in Duye Dukin. And there may not be another team in America, Jay, where all five guys who are on the court at any given time, they can all shoot the three. Jones absorbs the bump and hits the floater to tie the game at nine. Both teams now starting to heat up. Well, Dan, that's why I've compared Wisconsin a little bit to the San Antonio Spurs in that Bo Ryan puts five guys on the floor that all can score. You have to guard all five guys. And it puts you into rotation. It makes it awfully difficult to double team. And they burned Duke on that last double team opportunity because of that. And there's a touch foul out on the perimeter on Okafor. Now take a look when Frank Kaminsky gets the ball inside. Emil Jefferson guarding him. And now all of a sudden Quinn Cook comes over to double. Look at the distance that Jalil Okafor has to cover in order to get a hand up on Duye Dukin and Dukin catches it ready to shoot this guy's 6'10 and Okafor's got to operate in a space where he's not comfortable and they put him out on the perimeter he just picked up a foul just because he puts his hand on a ball handler and picks up a needless foul out on the perimeter. Dukin hit a number of threes for the Badgers down in the Bahamas including two in the semi-final win over Georgetown he doesn't hit them they don't get to the final they went on to beat Oklahoma to win the championship. Well, Duke's got a lot of different guys in unusual spots. He's got small guys guarding inside. Decker's being guarded by Suleiman down low. Suleiman's checked in along with Marshall Plumley for Duke. Matt Jones as well. Open is Koenig. So all the points for the Badgers have come on three-pointers so far. Dan, that's just beautiful basketball. Get the ball inside, relocate. Koenig ready to shoot. It's the way the game's supposed to be played. Suleiman answers at the other end and it's tied again. Duke's going to be able to get open shots. The question is, will they hit them all night? 
You can get pull-up jump shots coming off the of ball screens. You might not be able to get all the way to the bucket, but you can get pull-ups. And Duke and maybe overhandling a little bit, turns it over and then fouls Winslow. And that'll take us to the under 12 media timeout. It is tied at 12. It's been all threes for Wisconsin, including the corner three by Bronson Koenig. But Duke right back with the answer is Rashid Suleiman knocks one down. And it's 12-12 in this top five matchup. Back in Madison, Dan Schulman, Jay Bill is the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Duke and Wisconsin tied at 12. And one of the difficulties is you talked about coming into the game. How Duke covers a seven-footer as unique as Frank Kaminsky. Well, Kaminsky, because of the Duke switching, he just decided to run out to the three-point line and make Okafor chase him. Okafor was late getting there. Then off a quick little drag screen in transition, just picks and pops and gets to that three-point line ready to shoot. That's awfully difficult for Okafor to have to move his feet to guard the ball handler coming off that pick and roll and then to get back to the, the roll guy or the pick and pop guy, Frank Kaminsky. Let's take a look now at tonight's Wendy's Wood and Watch and Frank Kaminsky an easy choice to be one of the preseason top 50 candidates a preseason first team All-American the MVP down in Atlantis last week the most outstanding player of the West Regional remember the game against Arizona 28 points and 11 rebounds he got knocked around a little bit in the game against Georgetown last week came back and played very well in the second half of the championship against Oklahoma had foul trouble in the first half and now no Okafor in the game so Kaminsky on Plumley as Cook That's sneaks Cook. inside and gives the Blue Devils the lead. Well that was a really good job by Quinn Cook of turning the corner. He got an angle on Josh Gosser one of the best defenders in the country and an all Big Ten all defensive team member. Boy, this is good for Duke to be able to pressure D.A. Duke and he's turning that thing over. That's two in a row. Ball is still loose and it's Marshall Plumley who picks it up and slams it home. Duke is forcing the big guys of Wisconsin to handle the ball in spots they don't want to be handling it. Duke in two turnovers in a row against Justice Winslow. And now a foul against the Blue Devils. It'll be on Matt Jones. After Duke and mishandles it due to the pressure of Justice Winslow, another excellent defender, Matt Jones, who's come into the ball game from Texas, first to the floor, and Duke winds up getting an easy basket out of it. An easy basket because they worked really hard. And Mike Krzyzewski's really happy with the work of some of his bench players. Matt Jones has clearly improved from last year. Plumlee's been energetic as always, very efficient, and Suleiman really seems to have found his niche this year, coming off the bench and. and Although his role, his change came in, you know, was he going to be a big time scorer? And now he's really more defender distributor, Jay, than he is a scorer for this team. Well, he can come in and play some point. He's an excellent defender. And a guy who, when he comes into the game, can look to make a three, but also put the ball on the deck and attack the rim. And he's not playing a ton of minutes, but he's much more efficient this year in the minutes that he's playing. That was the second foul on Cook. That is a loss for the Blue Devils. Okafor, Jefferson, and Tyus Jones back into the game and out for Duke. Wisconsin doing a good job of lifting up the Duke defense. Therefore, they can drive baseline. You don't see these Wisconsin guards miss many free throws. An excellent free throw shooting team, but especially the guards. And a team, you always like this stat, they have made more free throws than their opponents have attempted this year. And that's not a fluke. It happened last year as well. Matt Jones, tough shot off the glass. That's a tough shot over a 6'9 defender in Sam Decker. Duke's made seven of their last eight. And Wisconsin still has not made a two-point field goal in this game. Until now. What a hesitation move. And Jackson brings him back within two. Well, Trayvon Jackson may not be the quickest guard in the Big Ten, but... That hesitation move was spectacular. He's so strong. Tyus Jones too strong. Rebound down to Jackson. And Jackson's going to look to push it. Knocked out of bounds by Jones. Jackson has a size and strength advantage over Tyus Jones. And just off that little drag screen, he's able to back it up, hesitate, and get all the way to the rim. Because Wisconsin's guys all can shoot it, you've got to stay with your man. You can't just pack it into the lane. Otherwise, Jackson will be able to pick you apart. 
hit it to an open three point shooter. And that opens up the lane. The son of former Ohio State star Jimmy Jackson, Trayvon Jackson, who really came in as a two guard, has adapted to the point guard role in the last couple of years. Decker with a nice move, but couldn't knock down the jumper. Kaminsky trying to take that switch and take Tyus Jones down into the low post, but the pressure didn't allow the pass. Good burst of speed by <laughs> Suleiman, and the Blue Devils are up four. Duke is getting easier shots than Wisconsin. They're shooting a much better percentage because they're taking better twos, and Wisconsin is staying right in this because of their three-point shooting ability. Flows out there by Jones, but Kaminsky's open. And we have a foul going against Okafor. Duke. It's on Okafor. Yeah. He ran over Nigel Hayes. That is the second foul on Okafor. That's going to send him to the bench. So and they've lost Cook with two and Okafor with two. And they're both kind of what you would call needless fouls. Putting two hands on a ball handler out on the perimeter because that's not something he normally does. And then trying to get to a three-point shooter, he just runs over the screen or Nigel Hayes. Plumley back into the game. See if Wisconsin could take advantage with Okafor on the bench, maybe for the rest of the half. We'll see how Mike Krzyzewski plays it. Jackson just does save it from an over and back. And good block out there by Plumley and a reach in foul going against the Badgers. I think it was Hayes getting in there, and it was. Wisconsin is getting a switch with Tyus Jones going on to Frank Kaminsky. It's happened probably 10 times, and they've not once been able to get the ball into Kaminsky, once because of the pressure. Second foul on Hayes, Jay. He's got to go to the bench. And not the kind of foul that Bo Ryan's going to like. Reaching in to try to slap the ball away 90 feet from their own basket. Well, that'll keep him on the bench for the remainder of the first half. Bo Ryan doesn't usually play guys with two fouls. Jefferson forces up a prayer, and that prayer is answered. But what a tough shot. And that was really good defense by Josh Gosser. Just a better offensive play by Jefferson. And Jefferson has really done a great job as a junior with his rebounding this year. Jackson with a reverse. Second basket with the right hand for the lefty, Trayvon Jackson, to bring the Badgers back within four. Well, it shows his strength again. One of the stronger point guards in the country. Suleiman misses the three, saved by Kaminsky. Well, how about those hands? And almost lost it. Back door. Decker! Jefferson quiets the crowd with a baseline jumper. Nice two-man game with him and Suleiman. You don't often think of Emil Jefferson from Philadelphia as a pick-and-pop guy. But he caught the ball in good rhythm, let that thing go after that shot he made over Josh Gosser. He's got some confidence. So back and forth, they go long stretches without a whistle. And the Blue Devils, with three freshmen in the starting lineup, playing their first true road game and handling themselves well. Here in Madison thus far. Nice pass from Gosser to Dukin. And another tap out by Kaminsky, but it finds Jones. And that tap out almost starts a break for Duke. Rashid Suleiman had switched out on Frank Kaminsky, and the pressure would not allow Wisconsin to take advantage of it. You would think they'd be able to pick that apart, but they can't really see in. Duke look, look like, uh, looking like they're trying to figure out what they're in offensively right now as the shot clock ticks down. So Suleiman going to try to make a play himself, and Plumley in the right place at the right time, and Kaminsky is shaken up. He took one right in the gut when Rashid Suleiman drove in there. There's a, timeout a timeout on the floor, and we will check on the status of Frank Kaminsky when we come back to Madison. Saturday, the unbeaten Seminoles take on Georgia Tech in the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship. Number four, Florida State. Number 11, Georgia Tech, 8 Eastern on ABC. 
we'll look at a replay of what happened to Frank Kaminsky on the drive by Rashid Suleiman, and he got a knee right where you don't want to get a knee. It was straight up. It wasn't called. There was no nothing called on the play. I'm not sure the officials know what signal to give for that. <laughs> And he's okay. He was actually laughing with the officials during the timeout, but he'll sit down for a bit. So it's Duke and Vito Brown into the game for the first time for the Badgers. And then three guards, Gosser, Jackson, Hanick. Sometimes we see Wisconsin go with the so-called Redwoods lineup, one guard, four bigs. Now they're three guards, two bigs. I think the Redwoods lineup against this Duke team, it's a difficult ball handling lineup, and Duke is putting a lot of pressure and forcing guys to dribble. So I think Bo Ryan would like to have a better handling lineup out there. And right now, Dan, Duke shooting 63% from the field. They've got 16 points in the paint. They're getting the shots that they want. Wisconsin right now getting more threes, not really getting the shots that they want. And Duke playing very well without Quinn Cook and Jalil Okafor, both on the bench with two fouls. Yeah, 11 of Duke's points have come from their bench guys. Suleiman's come in and done a nice job, as has Matt Jones. Jackson driving again. Gosser posting on Suleiman. Brown just inside the arc, knocks it down. Seems like whoever Bo Ryan brings into the game, they can all dribble, pass, and shoot. Now a sophomore out of Bowling Green, Ohio, makes it a four-point game. Strong drive by Winslow, but a travel is the call as the freshman turns it over. Well, Josh Gosser just seemed like he got on the wrong side of Justice Winslow. Winslow, who's a left-hander, just blew by him off the dribble. And that's unusual for Josh Gosser to let somebody get past him like that. Well, with three guards in there for Wisconsin, it means one bigger guy for Duke has to guard a guard. And Winslow found himself on Koenig. Now the switch finds Plumley on Koenig. See if Wisconsin can exploit some of these mismatches. They just switch back. And Gosser's going to have to drive this. They're just playing with the ball. Go by somebody, especially when you have a big guy on the perimeter. Five to shoot. Three by Jackson. Duke in. Great job on the offensive glass. When you talk about an improved player, Duye Dukin is a really good basketball player. Can knock down threes. He's big and strong. Winslow no. Plumley gathers, loses it, and the Badgers with a chance to tie or take the lead. Well, you'd better be strong inside. There's contact. You got to deal with it. What a great pass from Gosser to Brown. <laughs> Timeout Duke. Tie game in Madison. Well, we're heading to the SEC Big 12 doubleheader, including a great game Friday night. Now, the SEC Big 12 challenge, excuse me, is number six, Texas, takes on number one, Kentucky, at 7 Eastern on Friday night from Rupp Arena. Then at 9 Eastern, it'll be Florida at Kansas. More great basketball coming here in Jimmy V. Week. You know, Dan, Duke and Wisconsin are number one and number two in the country in offensive efficiency. You know who number three is? Kentucky really now that surprised me wow you know Kentucky is yeah. very good offensively but I didn't think they were number three in the country well Wisconsin has been very efficient over about the last minute and a half Vito Brown with a jumper then later a great pass from Gosser to Duke and these two talented teams are all tied up all tied up at 26 and Bo Ryan like Mike Krzyzewski fired up right now for this top five matchup here in Madison and they have been so so tough to beat here for the Cole Center under Ryan are winning better than 90 percent of their games a ridiculous record against non-conference opponents and also an extremely good mark against top 25 teams who venture here to the, see the Grateful Rift. Absolutely an amazing job done by Bo Ryan you know he won national championships at Wisconsin Platteville coach for a couple years at Wisconsin Milwaukee and has done things unprecedented at Wisconsin in his tenure here. Turned it into a national power. Cook. And Duke might have gotten a piece of that. And it's going to be Wisconsin a ball. Boy, that's really good defense by Wisconsin. Forcing Quinn Cook to finish. 
and not allowing it to drop it off to Okafor. Mike Krzyzewski was talking to us this morning about how he told his players, you know, these guys are huge. You're going to be a bit taken aback by the height of some of these Wisconsin players. With Kaminsky at 7 foot, Dukin 6'10", Decker a long 6'9", even Gosser, who plays the point sometimes, is 6'4". And they play on the perimeter, they play inside, their guards will post, their big guys will shoot threes. They put you in unusual positions to have to defend. Really what Wisconsin is after is they want to get you one-on-one -on -one in the post. Shot clock down to four. Gosser. And the rebound down to Jones. Here's a good look for Cook. And Duke is back on top. Boy, that was a really nice job by Duke of pushing the ball up the floor after the miss in a controlled fashion and finding an open three-point shooter. Jones and Cook in the early part of the season, Jay, have done a great job playing together in the backcourt. And another good move on the inside by Trayvon Jackson. And because of the shooters Wisconsin has on the floor, there's really no help side. So Trayvon Jackson able to get all the way to the basket and just bully Duke to get there. And Duke is shooting the eyes out of him. Yep. Tyus Jones knocks it down. Duke is shooting 61% from the field, 14 of 23. Well, it's been any shot they want for the most part. And they're getting into the lane, getting to the basket. One thing they're not doing is getting to the free throw line. Wisconsin not fouling. Kaminsky gathers, and the turnaround is good. And the Badgers back within two. Tough cover for Jalil Okafor with those two fouls. Having to guard Kaminsky off the dribble. Jones rattles home a three. Boy, these Duke freshmen are not at all bothered by this stage. They seem to relish it. And they're back on top by five into the final two minutes of the first half. Koenig against a very good defender in Matt Jones. And Okafor's got to be careful with Kaminsky. That was good help by Matt Jones on that drive. Otherwise, Kaminsky would have gotten all the way to the rim. Gosser. Scoops it up and in. Duke pushing it down the court. Cook over Gosser. Misses the three. Well, that was a bad one. Duke was feeling it, but that one was not an open shot. That was over the outstretched arm of Gosser. Koenig misses wide right on a long two, and here comes Winslow. Long pass over the head of Okafor. And Mike Krzyzewski is not pleased. Coming up on the Mazda Halftime Report, Kevin Connors, Seth Greenberg will be back along with Jay. They'll break down the first half of this game and look at Carolina struggling. They lost at home to Iowa tonight. Another game, another big game in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Saw Notre Dame defeat Michigan State in overtime. Although the Big Ten has already clinched the challenge. After the two conferences tied each of the last two years. Decker's had a very quiet first half. Awful lot of dribbling by Wisconsin, and they're further out on the floor than I think they'd like to be, getting forced a little bit further out. There's the switch with Emil Jefferson on Jackson. It looked like Wisconsin was confused there, trying to get the ball inside to Kaminsky, and Jackson just threw it away. And Duke can hold it for the final shot of the first half. This is one of these things where Duke, if they can get the last score of the first half, they've got the ball, they've got the arrow to start the second half. A little bit of a silent run they could have. Winslow travels. And Bo Ryan will use a timeout to try to set up a final look for the Badgers here in the first half. Well, it is Jimmy V Week here on the ESPN family of networks, and we're asking you to help us beat cancer. The V Foundation awards 100% of direct donations and net proceeds of events to fund cancer research. Log on to JimmyV.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V to donate. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, here in Madison, Wisconsin, where we have seen a very entertaining and, as expected, a very close first half. Well, when Wisconsin has been able to get the ball inside to play inside out and the double team comes, that first pass out, Wisconsin's had some success. Frank Kaminsky hit a three. Here's Duye Dukin. Look at the amount of space that Jalil Okafor has to cover to get out to a shooter. And then 
if you overcommit, there's a back door coming, and you've got to stay with the shooter, so the help side not in place because the ball's in the middle of the floor. Really good basketball by Wisconsin. You haven't seen that much of it, though. Three seconds. Decker from about 35 feet. And the first half comes to a close as Wisconsin will trail at halftime for the first time this season. Number four Duke leading number two Wisconsin, 35-32 at the break. It's a good one. You won't want to miss the second half. When we come back, we will join right here live from the court here in Madison. We have Connor, Seth Greenberg, and Jay for the Mazda Halftime Report. The Blue Devils lead the Badgers by three at the break. At the sold out Cole Center, we go to the second half with number four Duke leading number two Wisconsin by three. 35 32. This is a part of Jimmy V Week for Cancel Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, welcome back. Almost felt like a prize fight in the early rounds to borrow an old cliche where they're still kind of feeling each other out a little bit. No question. Duke shot 60% in the first half. They shot it very well from the perimeter, got to the basket. Uh, by putting the ball on the deck. I think it'll be interesting to see how Wisconsin reacts in the second half to Duke switching. It was very disruptive in the first half. Are they going to be able to react to it and get the ball inside and take advantage of some of the mismatches that they created? 60% shooting for Duke in the first half, 15 for 25. Look at the free throws. Duke didn't get to the line. Wisconsin only did twice. Neither team got into the bonus in the first half. When's the last time you watched a game that had that? The game had very few wish whistles. Uh, a lot of continuous action, but at times uh, seemed to lack that that extra punch. We'll see if that comes here in the second half. Okafor and Cook both spent part of the half on the bench with two fouls as Okafor turns it over here to begin the second half. Well, don't you feel like Bo Ryan's got to be a little bit pleased that the Badgers allowed Duke to shoot 60% in the first half, 5 of 9 from 3, and yet they're only down a bucket? Yep. This is the third ever meeting. The first two both came in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Each team won once, each team winning on their home court. Kaminsky over Jefferson, and Frank Kaminsky is into double figures now with 10. Now Paul Ryan trying to isolate Frank Kaminsky and let him go one-on-one. -on -one. And Jackson called for a foul on a three-point attempt by Tyus Jones, and he's going to the bench. Kaminsky just posting up just outside the elbow and he's got one-on-one -on -one in the post against Emil Jefferson who's a very good defender doesn't have the bulk of Kaminsky but Kaminsky showing great footwork and that's a really difficult and nice shot that he was able to hit on the right side of the floor meanwhile three freebies here for Jones who certainly hasn't been playing like a freshman in his first true road game He's had an outstanding night so far, and Trayvon Jackson, after committing the Cardinal sin of fouling a three-point shooter, goes to the bench, and Bronson Koenig will take his place. Well, Jackson very upset with himself when he hit Tyus Jones' hand on that follow-through. Cost him three points. Well, Jones, high school friends with Jalil Okafor, even though he grew up in Minnesota, and Okafor grew up in Chicago. A lot of people called him kind of a package deal, but he does not play like a teenager out on the floor. Duke doing all this switching. That almost looks like a zone that they're playing. Sam Decker gets the corner three to go. For Decker now five points. He had a very quiet first half. The matchup of Decker and Winslow never really materialized in the first half. Now Winslow did not score in the first half. Decker just had that backdoor dunk and that was it. Took a couple of bad shots. Here's Okafor. Again, muscling Kaminsky right in under the rim. Well, Okafor saw Kaminsky's footwork on one end and then showed Kaminsky his footwork up close. That was a great move along the baseline. A nice post feed from Winslow, too, to get it into Okafor. Now, the deeper post position he gets, I mean, he can bury you down the post, and you're done the deeper he catches it. Painting off to Decker. Decker off to Gosser. Count it. Well, how good is that movement against the green? Here comes the Grateful Red. No 
it before. Outside the paint now, spinning over Kaminsky, no. And Hayes down with a rebound for Wisconsin. He had two fouls in the first half, and it was not as much of a factor as he normally is. Well, Bo Ryan letting Frank Kaminsky go one-on-one -on -one defensively on Okafor. And Kaminsky just makes him shoot over. Not going to foul him, going to make him take a tough shot. If he makes it, congrats. Look at Koenig in the post. And the rebound down to Emil Jefferson, who's having a big season on the glass, averaging almost nine boards per game. In particular, he's an outstanding offensive rebounder. Wild shot by Jones won't go. And Winslow has it and draws the foul on Hayes, his third. Coach K starting three freshmen, Okafor, Winslow, Jones, the last time he started three or more freshmen, as much as he has this year, was 1986 when he started four freshmen for the most part, including a youthful-looking Jay Billis. Well, the results weren't so hot back then when he started with so many freshmen. What a great play by Tyus Jones. I said 86. I meant 80, 82, 83. 82, right? 83, 82, 83. Yeah. Forgive me. 86 was the year you went to the final four. Who can remember that far back? <laughs> that was that was actually the number one recruiting class in yeah, the country. No thanks to me, but Johnny Dawkins, Mark Allery, and David Henderson. That is a great group, and that group matured into the group that went to the Final Four, in fact, to the National Championship game in 1986 before losing to Louisville, right? That was back yeah. when, uh, when Mike Krzyzewski was a young man and his hair was the same color. <laughs> Jones, Tyus Jones, that is, at the free throw line again for Duke. Was that the first free throw they've shot? Outside of the, the, that was really the first free throw outside of that uh, that foul on the three-point yeah. shot. No free throws in the first half for Duke. I can't remember the last time they went a whole half without shooting a foul shot. Duke is three for four from the line. Of the, uh, Wisconsin, rather, is two for two from the line. That's it. Duke misses a putback. Decker misses a tip. Still loose. And Decker comes out with it. And a fresh 35 now for the Badgers. Koenig asking for the screen. Tyus Jones was on Duye Dukin. Good fake. Got two men in the air. Misses the floater, though, and now Duke with a chance to run. Jones into the chest of Gosser. It's an offensive foul. And Mike Krzyzewski is sliding down the sideline as if to say to the official that Gosser was sliding on D. Just a terrific outlet pass by Jalil Okafor, and that's one of the reasons, Dan, that the charge block call needs an overhaul. We, the game tried to overhaul it, but they wouldn't stick with it. It's just something that the game's going to have to live with now. Kaminsky with a couple of early threes in this game. Way back at the beginning of the first half. Now Decker finds a lane. And Wisconsin, the last three or four times down the floor, Jay, have had good looks around the rim and haven't been able to finish. Well, they've been getting bumped a little bit, but you got to go through that contact and finish plays. And Sam Decker usually a lot stronger now. You know, he grew two inches yeah. over the summer. 6'7 into the summer, 6'9 out of it. Okafor fouled by Kaminsky. Timeout on the floor as the battle of the big men continues here in this top five matchup. In Madison, the senior Kaminsky double figures with 10 to lead the Badgers. The freshman Okafor trying to keep pace on the inside for the Blue Devils. Tonight's game is part of ESPN's Journey to the Tourney presented by Sonic. A season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament. Well, and both the big guys have been going one-on-one -on -one in the paint. And Frank Kaminsky going one-on-one -on -one against Emil Jefferson. A nice little spin move along the baseline and off the glass. And then when Jalil Okafor catches the ball on the low block, he knows exactly where he is under the basket, gets Kaminsky to overcommit, and then spins back for the easy layup. Both of them have been very efficient, although it was a little bit of a, a slog in the first half for Okafor, not getting the ball quite as much. He's been much more active in this second half. Winslow. Around and out, he is still scoreless in this game. Nigel Hayes has played 13 minutes. He's had some foul trouble, and all he's got is one rebound, no points for the Badgers. He got two early fouls and got that third foul early in the second half, and he's been 
Hamstrung a little bit with that foul trouble. He needs to be aggressive. And he was, and it pays off. He just took the freshman to school down in the post. Wisconsin, instead of setting so many screens and getting switches, just trying to isolate guys and mismatches in those posts. Not that that's a mismatch, because Justice Winslow is big and strong, but Nigel Hayes is bigger and longer. And Hayes just able to get around him and get all the way to the rim with no help coming over. And he sent Winslow all the way to the bench. After he blew by him in the post, Emil Jefferson is back in now to try to contain Hayes. First lead for Wisconsin since it was 12 to 9. About eight minutes into the game. Jones with a drive, fouled by Koenig. Boy, Jones has done a terrific job of getting an angle and getting into the lane and putting pressure on the rim. 25 minutes into this game from what you've seen. Both of these teams worthy of the top five rankings that they've got? No question. I mean, Wisconsin plays a little bit of a different style, but they're so skilled at so many different positions. And they're really solid defensively. It's a kind of a bend-don't-break philosophy defensively. And Duke can really score. Yep. I mean, this team is its so young in spots, starting three freshmen. But these guys do not play like young players. They, they played on big stages before in high school, and they are not at all intimidated. Duke is averaging better than 90 points per game, and they lead the nation in points per possession, over 1.3 points per possession. They're also in the top five in the country in assists, and they're number one in the nation in assist to turnover ratio. And now Suleiman has switched off on Kaminsky. Now he's on Hayes. Gosser. Kicks it back out to Kaminsky. Shot clock at six. Dukin on a drive this time. And a good rebound by Jefferson. Wisconsin being put in some odd spots with these switches. And they're trying to attack it, but it's not normally what they do. And they look out of sync as a result of it. These switches have been really disruptive to Wisconsin. Suleiman gets the roll. And Duke is back on top. Suleiman is fired up. I mean, there's no hesitation on the part of some of Duke's shooters when they get an opening to put up a three. Jackson in and out, down with the rebound is Jones, and the Blue Devils look to extend the lead. Nice crossover. And the finish for the freshman. What a play. But Jones got the mismatch with Nigel Hayes on him, foul trouble and all, and just blew right by him and scored over him. What a play by Tyus Jones. A game-high 16 for the freshman, Tyus Jones. And the Blue Devils now lead by five. Got a good one for you Friday night, headlining the SEC Big 12 Challenge, the number one team in the nation. The Kentucky Wildcats are home to a very good team from Austin, the Texas Longhorns, 7 Eastern, Friday on ESPN, part of Journey to the Tourney, presented by Sonic. Texas with a one-point win over UConn on the weekend. Jonathan Holmes is off to some kind of a start this season. And Kentucky, a perfect 7-0, coming at you in waves. Kentucky has nine McDonald's All-Americans as well, and ten guys that can really play. That's why that platoon system can work. And you're right about them coming at you in waves. It's like a... a system in hockey where you have a line yep. change every few minutes. Kaminsky triple team gives it up. Decker as Kaminsky repost has Jones on him and around and out. Again the Badgers have had a number of opportunities from about six feet and in pretty good looks that haven't gone down. Well, Duke has had a, a year this year where they've passed the ball extraordinarily well. They have assists on two-thirds of their buckets. They've only got six assists in this game. Bad pass there by Rashid Suleiman but they're able to go one-on-one, -on -one, take their guys off the dribble and get to the basket or set up a pass back out. There's a switch. You need to get the ball inside, but the pressure, Gossard couldn't see the Hayes. Kaminsky. And is fouled by Okafor. Again, you're not going to see many seven-footers that can put the, put the ball on the floor and take three dribbles into the lane with the left hand and spin back right like that and have the footwork, not the walk. And Frank Kaminsky is and one of those guys, if not the only one. And the foul not on Okafor. Suleiman coming down to help picked up the foul. That'll be his first. Okafor had two in the first half. is still at two right now. Nigel Hayes is the only player in the game with three fouls. Kaminsky, who was a backup his first two years, and then really burst onto the scene as a star last year. 
came back says he loves college doesn't want to grow up before he has to so came back for his senior season with 43 points against North Dakota early in the year nice floater just a quick hitter by Duke and Suleiman has come into this game and played extraordinarily well yeah. he's an excellent defender Remember last year he played himself out of the starting lineup Jade in fact had a game against Michigan where he didn't play at all he had really had to work himself back into the rotation reportedly came into the year last year not in the greatest of shape but he looks like a a much more intense and focused player here this year well last year that game he had against Virginia had 21 points in a game at Cameron including the game winner after Emil Jefferson found him after an offensive rebound and that was a huge basket not only for Duke but for Rashid Suleiman to sort of get himself back into it hit that game tying shot at Syracuse up in the Carrier Dome and this year he's not playing near as many minutes but he's been very efficient in the minutes that he's played and speaking of efficient Marshall Plumley checks into the game and now for the Blue Devils Plumley this year in limited minutes has made nine of his 11 shots and all 10 of his free throws nice spin move by Kaminsky and he'll be heading back to the free throw line we have a timeout on the floor Duke up by six Badgers to the line when we come back to Madison Jim Falvano and I were competitors we were players then as young coaches when he got out of coaching we became friends and when he was diagnosed with cancer uh, we became brothers help us beat cancer the V Foundation awards 100 percent of direct donations and net proceeds of events to fund cancer research log on to jimmyv.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V to donate Kaminsky at the line brings the Badgers back within five Kaminsky's had to work hard tonight four for nine 12 points six rebounds this is a free throw Decker had it and lost it well that's one where Decker if he could have held on to that ball not only a stick back opportunity but maybe could have kicked it out for an open three Local four getting ready to check back in for the Blue Devils at the next opportunity both teams 7-0 Duke ranked fourth Wisconsin ranked second Suleiman playing well tonight Jefferson steps into an 18-footer misses wide right tapped out by Plumley, but into the hands of Dukin and Jefferson had a lot of time to pull the trigger on that shot Can they get Decker going can they get him involved in the offense somehow again into Kaminsky one-on-one in -on -one the post against Plumley. And draws another foul. But how about that shot fake? Just a subtle little fake gets Plumley into the air, draws another defender, and Kaminsky can go right into that defender. You know, one on one, it is hard to imagine him being stopped. I mean, he may miss, but it's going to be awfully difficult to, to stop him. You know, last year in the NCAA tournament against Arizona, you mentioned it, Danny, at 28 points, 11 rebounds. They couldn't guard him with one guy. Yep. And Duke's having some of the same issues in this second half. Well, Ryan's been able to isolate him in the low post. You know, running offense where he's screening just gets him into a switch situation. They've not been able to take advantage of the mismatch because of the pressure on the passer. It's been very disruptive. Couple of free throws bring the crowd back to life. Wisconsin needs a stop to get this crowd into it. Matt Jones and a foul on Dukin. And a look of disbelief on his face. And a look of anger on the face of Bo Ryan after that call. Uh, what the referees will say is he brought his arms down, that he wasn't straight up. You know, a lot of coaches will say, hey, you have to have your elbows behind your ears. But he brought those arms down, and that way Jones could go into the contact and draw the foul. Vito Brown into the game and Kaminsky will get a breather well, when you look at some of the numbers being put up by the respective backcourts in this game advantage Duke led by Tyus Jones the freshman he's got 16 of those 36 well, Jones has been great off the dribble he's hit a couple of threes in transition but he's done most of his damage off the bounce Four-point lead, Blue Devils on the road here in Madison. 
the Trayvon Jackson the game. I think Jackson can drive some of these switches if he gets a bigger guy on him. Brown's got Cook on him inside. Stop and go by Jackson. Pulls up for the jumper and knocks it down. You talked about the hesitation in his game in the first half. Well, he's looking to drive Matt Jones and pulled up when he backed off. That was a really nice play by Trayvon Jackson. That's the third or fourth time we've seen some stop and go moves from him that have worked out well. Now Winslow, who's been having a tough night with his first points of the game. Just a catch and shoot opportunity. Nigel Hayes just too slow getting back to him. And Duke continues to shoot the lights out here at the Cole Center. Brown is wide open. Just hesitated on that a little bit. That ball's loose and had Gosser turned, it would have bounced right to him. Good hustle by Hayes to knock it out of bounds. Well, a nice play by Nigel Hayes. That would have been either a three shot fake or a drive by Jones if he were allowed to catch that. Bo Ryan substituting freely here tonight among his top eight. Koenig back in. Gosser to the bench. Gosser goes to the bench absolutely exhausted just because of how hard he plays. Not a tougher player in the Big Ten than Josh Gosser. Two years ago missed the entire season tearing his ACL. Wore a brace last year. The brace has come off and he's now a fifth year senior for the Badgers here's Okafor trying to back down Vito Brown turn around over him will go and the lead grows to seven that is the largest lead for either team in the game tonight Boy, initially that quick spin that Okafor makes so difficult to guard Okafor the rebound off the miss by Hayes and Okafor going against Quinn Cook. Excuse me, uh, Hayes going against Quinn Cook. Okafor coming down the rebound, but you know, that's a play that he's got to make. If you're going against a smaller defender, you got to score and get fouled on. Frank Kaminsky getting ready to check back in. Do they try to get it down to Okafor again with a Brown on? Down to 10. Cook keeps the dribble alive. Floater, oh. yes! Well, how about that step back and going right around Sam Decker? What a big time move. And the backcourt, whether it's Jones, whether it's Cook, continues to shine for the Blue Devils here tonight. So many one on one moves made by Duke's guards. Tyus Jones, and then here, Quinn Cook with Sam Decker on him, just backs him off and then just makes a quick blow by move with the floater in the lane off the glass. Boy, that is really pretty. Quinn Cook has had a really good game, but he's had a great year, more importantly, for Duke. Sunday, the selection committee's final rankings will be revealed. Find out who is in the college football playoff selection show presented by AT&T Sunday at 1230 Eastern Time on ESPN and watch ESPN. You see Ohio State on the outside looking in right now. Number five, of course, they'll take on a Wisconsin in the Big Ten Championship game Saturday down in Indianapolis. Alabama, Oregon, TCU, and Florida State in that order right now occupying the four spots. And one of those on the selection committee for the college football playoff is Wisconsin Athletic Director Barry Alvarez. And each member of that committee, they spend a couple days a week in Dallas. Wow. Pull up in some conference room making all those decisions. That, that's quite a time commitment for everybody on the committee. Hayes. And another miss around the rim. The ball will stay with Wisconsin. But how many opportunities uh, have they had, especially here in the second half, for layups and putbacks? Boy, they've had a lot of opportunities, but they've had smaller guys in front of them, and that's been a little bit disruptive because all this switching. They haven't handled it, and it was well as they'd like. Jackson into traffic, draws the foul. I think Wisconsin's got a lot of opportunities to drive the ball, especially Trayvon Jackson. When he gets that chance, he should take it. Because he can, if he gets one-on-one, -on -one, he's strong enough to go into either Quinn Cook or Tyus Jones. But he can also dish it if there's help. Look at the shooting by the Blue Devils tonight. 60% in the first half, and even better than that here in the second half. This free throw a, snap a 7-0 run by Duke. This is a really good offensive team. I think the question coming into the season was how good would Duke be defensively? You know, last year it wasn't a, a great defensive team. This year much better defensively, much better putting pressure on the ball. Wisconsin needs to stop here. This team's at home and needs to make a stand to get this crowd into it. 
and get something going. Hook. Nice pass. And Okafor, the recipient. Beautiful play by Quinn Cook. He drew Frank Kaminsky over from the weak side. Nobody rotated down. Just a quick drop-off, easy basket. And it's back to nine for the Blue Devils. Jackson knocks it down to six. Jackson playing well tonight. 15 points to lead the Badgers. He's really attacked. One on one. The two centers, the two All-American candidates. And how about that? Okafor not just a post player. Well, he's got a ridiculous touch. You know, when he shoots the ball off the glass, it just dives into the basket. Koenig into the paint. Nice pass. Kaminsky. And he is fouled on the drive by Okafor. Well, the Duke guards have been able to beat Wisconsin off the dribble, whether it's been Tyus Jones or Quinn Cook. Here, Quinn Cook getting just past Josh Gosser. That draws Frank Kaminsky over. That's what you call an easy basket. Emphatic by Jalil Okafor. Back at the Cole Center with Jay Billis. I'm Dan Schulman. Duke leading Wisconsin 62-54. to 7.09 to go in the second half. Jay's going to show us how the Badgers are trying to use Frank Kaminsky to their advantage down on the post. Well, Duke is switching, so they're, they're switching out on screens and exchanges. So now all of a sudden you got a point guard guarding Frank Kaminsky. It's been disruptive. They've not been able to take advantage of it. He drives that, angled out, and all of a sudden he's got a triple team. So Duke is helping very well and recovering, even though they've had mismatches, a mismatch inside. But because of the pressure on the ball, the bad angle, they weren't able to get a clean post feed, and you can get help over there. So Kaminsky's shooting over two guys. This switching has been very disruptive to Wisconsin's offense. Wisconsin shot only 35% in the second half. And Dan, how about this? Duke shooting 71%, 10 of 14 in the second half. That, that's remarkable. And 64% of the game. Sports Center comes your way live from the Cole Center here in Madison. Kevin Connors, John Buchigras are here with all kinds of post-game reaction to this one and a look at the entire ACC Big Ten Challenge. Kaminsky hit two threes, Jay, in the first few minutes of the game and has been almost entirely a post player since. He's very good at both, but has Duke taken away the three from Kaminsky or have the Badgers gone away from him? Well, it's been a little bit of both, but I think they've, they've taken away mostly, and they've tried to isolate him on one side and let him go one-on-one -on -one because it's been difficult for because of the switching for him to get an open look. And Duke's done a very good job in the second half of mixing beating this Wisconsin team off the dribble and then getting it inside to Okafor and letting him go one-on-one. -on -one. Kaminsky down with his seventh rebound of the game. Jackson off to Hayes, and he's called for the offensive foul. Winslow stepping in to take the charge, and for Hayes, that'll be his fourth. What a tough night for Nigel Hayes. I'm not sure that Trayvon Jackson shouldn't have taken that all the way himself, but nice job by Winslow to get back. And look, there hasn't been a clean charge taken in this game. Josh Gosser took a charge earlier that was called a charge. This was a block. The one with Gosser was a block. The truth is 75% of these charge block calls are blocks. So Hayes to the bench. Duke with the ball on a seven-point lead. And Duke's been able to go one-on-one. -on -one. They haven't had a lot of assists because they haven't drawn a lot of help so they can finish those plays on their own. Battle inside, and now Okafor out to set a screen. Goes around Kaminsky and draws the foul. And Kaminsky with his hands clasping the back of his head in disbelief at the call. Boy, so quick. Jalil Okafor is 6'10", six, six almost 6'11", 270 pounds. Look at that burst of quickness just getting past. Frank Kaminsky in the post. Usually you make a big guy catch it a step or two off the low block, and the defenders won the battle. But not with Okafor. That's why he's the presumptive number one pick in the draft. He's been a very efficient 6 of 8 from the floor tonight. As he gets a very friendly bounce on the free throw. Okafor now with 13 points and 5 rebounds in the game.
It's been remarkable, really, the ease with which Duke has gotten the shot it wants, not only in the first half, but even more so in the second half. Well, this is a good Wisconsin defensive team. And Duke has really cut them up. Now Wisconsin trying to lift up that Duke defense and try to get some driving lanes. Not going to mismatch here. And Jackson over Okafor for the three. Trayvon Jackson keeping the Badgers in it right now. He's come in and he's attacked. Whether it's off the dribble, you lay off him and he knocks down a shot. Game high 18. Fans now rising to their feet here with the Cole Center. And a timeout for Mike Krzyzewski. We will keep it here and take another look at another three by Trayvon Jackson. Now, Trayvon Jackson's been one of the few guys that has really successfully attacked these switches. The screen kind of pick and roll action up top. And Jalil Okafor switches out, gives him a little bit of space. Jackson, instead of driving by, where he might give Okafor the chance to catch up and block or bother a shot that he's trying to take at the basket, able to pull up for that open three. Duke leading by five with a 5.26 to go. Kaminsky and Jackson have been a lot of the offense for the Badgers. We saw them three games in a row down on the Bahamas. And Koenig and Dukin and Decker and Hayes. Everybody contributed, but it hasn't been as much of a seven or eight man effort tonight as it normally is. Well, Nigel Hayes has been saddled with foul trouble. He has not played his normal game, hadn't played as well. But one thing you know about a Bo Ryan coach team, you know, there's no quit in this Wisconsin team. They've been down at times throughout the year. They were down to Georgetown, and they made a great comeback toward the end of the game. Other, as there's a turnover, ball going back to the Badgers, other than Jackson and Kaminsky, nobody else for Wisconsin has more than five points in the game. Well, Wisconsin got a stop after the timeout. Now they have to follow it up and get a score. And when you're trailing, you need consecutive stops followed by scores. Here's the switch. Jackson the drive. And Okafor the foul. That'll be number three. I believe that's four. I believe that is four on Jalil Okafor. It is the fourth on the freshman. Trayvon Jackson has made so many smart decisions off those switches getting Okafor in the middle of the floor where he can either pull up with some space or drive on by and he showed his strength there getting into his body and still getting a shot off didn't complete it but that was a huge play by Trayvon Jackson and Okafor goes to the bench and it's not Plumley coming in it is Emil Jefferson coming in so the first time tonight that Duke goes without one of their true centers in the game a much smaller lineup for the Blue Devils and a much louder building than it was just a minute ago. Suleiman from the elbow. He has had some kind of a night. Just off that elbow ball screen, and he came off firing. Well, when you get this kind of productivity off your bench, it makes you that much more difficult to beat, especially on the road. Suleiman has been excellent. Another switch. See, Kaminsky's got to get the ball. He's got Quinn Cook on him. Instead, it's Jackson with a drive. Throws up a right-handed prayer, and Suleiman down with a rebound. Now, Wisconsin didn't improve their passing angle, taking a couple dribbles down. Kaminsky's got a point guard on him. He has got to get the ball. Big possession. Suleiman again. Not this time, and Kaminsky the rebound. Well, Duke just ran the same play that they did to get Suleiman that open jumper. Took it all the way to the basket, just couldn't finish it. We go under four minutes to go. Kaminsky surrounded. Duke ball. Tyus Jones in attack mode lays it in. Well, what a defensive sequence for Duke. Kaminsky puts the ball on the floor, drew a crowd. They took it away, and two points as a result. Now Kaminsky in the post with a smaller defender on him, left it short, and Jefferson wraps up the rebound. That looked like a tired finish by Frank Kaminsky. You don't see him miss those very often. 
It was three moments ago, and they had the mismatch in the post, didn't get the ball in there. Now it's seven, and Duke's got the ball as we near the final three minutes. Duke scores here. They can make it a three-possession game. Three possessions of threes. Jefferson. And that's going to be a goaltending call on Kaminsky to extend the lead to nine. It's been all Duke in the last couple of minutes, and the guard play for the Blue Devils has been fantastic tonight. Suleiman off the bench with a dozen. And then Tyus Jones with a loose ball, the drive, and the lay-in. And Duke's up nine. Hey, what's up? Sports Center on the court. Yeah. After the game, John Butchergrass, Kevin Connors. Of course, we got the top. It's a normal Sports Center. Some treats. We got Melvin Gordon joining us. Yep. Something that happened at the start of the Sixers Wolves game that never happens. And then something that happened at the end of the Sixers Wolves game that never happens. Who's and I? Yeah, after the game. All right, guys, thanks. Well, something going on here that almost never happens. A team shooting better than 60% against the Badgers the last time. Somebody did that was the Florida Gators back in 2012. Duke is shooting 64% in this game, and they've got a nine-point lead with 2.40 to go. Well, Duke's getting all the way to the rim. And that's resulted in some easier looks. Hayes lost it, and it will be Wisconsin ball. SEC Big 12 doubleheader comes your way Friday night. It begins at 7 Eastern time. Freshman to Fina, Miles Turner. And the Longhorns taking on the number one team of the nation, Kentucky. And then at 9, just talked about the Florida Gators. This year's version of the Gators will take on Kansas. And Florida right now having to manufacture points. Billy Donovan doesn't have that low post presence that he had last year in Patrick Young. So it's been difficult for Florida to score. Dosser at the line, knocks down the first. Okafor back for Jefferson. 2.32 to go in regulation. If Gosser makes this, he got a seven-point game. And Wisconsin's got to figure out a way to get a stop. Well, Duke right now can use some clock. They're not looking to burn it. But they can use some clock and then attack. That's just what they're doing. They're in a 2-3 set right now. Krzyzewski used to call that 2-3 motion. Then they can get in and call a set and go the last 10 seconds of the clock. Tyus Jones, who's had a sensational night. Wow. Adds to his totals with a three. Well, he got Bronson Koenig just to back up a, a touch and had his arms down. I'm not sure whether he had his foot on the line, but yeah, that was gonna, a huge shot. They're going to take a look at it right now to see and I think they're going to change it to a two he was behind the line but then it looks like he kind of jabbed with the right foot inside the line right there yeah so it will be a two for Jones Boy, if you don't have a hand up he is unafraid to pull the trigger see Bronson Koenig with his arms down and too late to get him up and really bother that shot by Tyus Jones he has been magnificent on the road in his first big-time road game. Jay, how about 20 points, four assists, and one turnover in 34 minutes. Jackson trying to keep the Badgers in it. Timeout, Wisconsin. And Jackson has been equally good. Wisconsin. Well, he has made some huge plays to keep Wisconsin in this in a two-possession game. Now, that was a gigantic shot for Wisconsin. 23 for Jackson. Same kind of deal. You just go underneath. You go underneath Frank Kaminsky. He's going to pull the trigger on that. He has done a really nice job. When he's gotten a switch, he's been able to either drive it or pull up. And what, what would Wisconsin be doing without Trayvon Jackson in this ballgame? He's been great. Usually a team that features a lot of balanced scoring. That hasn't been the case tonight. It's been all Jackson and Kaminsky. The two of them have 38 of the 65 Badger points. Whereas Duke has four players in double figures led by Tyus Jones. It's, it's almost been surprising how the switching that Duke has put on in this ballgame has bothered Wisconsin throughout the first 38 minutes of the game. And they get the stop they need to keep momentum shifting towards them. A six-point lead, and again, the Blue Devils will show some patience on offense. 
Feels like Duke has had Wisconsin at arm's length almost the entire second half. The one exception is when the Badgers got it down to three a few minutes ago. And then couldn't execute at the offensive end, and Duke got a couple of scores. 11 seconds left on the shot clock. So Duke's going to want to get into something quickly. And one thing Wisconsin does not want to do here is foul. They want to be aggressive, but you don't want to foul. Oh, nice play. And Winslow will slam it home on the feed by Okafor off the inbounds play. And then a walk. Wow. And frustration for the Badgers. You see it on the face of Jackson. You see it on the face of Kaminsky. Boy, what a turnaround. Wisconsin able to cut it to two possessions. Winslow inbounding and then comes right off for the cut and the dunk. Wisconsin unable to adjust. And then on the quick inbounds, Rashid Suleiman was up and forced Trayvon Jackson to turn it over. Well, what an impressive performance tonight by this young Duke team with three freshmen starting in their first true road game to come into a place where the Badgers hardly ever lose and a lead by eight with just over a minute to go. Well, Duke trying to salt it away, then turns the ball over. And whatever Wisconsin does here, they need to get a quick score. If you can get a three, great, but you've really got to get a score. Get the ball to the rim, give yourself an opportunity to get fouled. Final minute. One minute remaining in the game, one minute remaining. Kane got his man in the air. Into Kaminsky with good deep position to make it a six-point game. Just one timeout remains for Wisconsin. There's the foul by Koenig. And Quinn Cook, an excellent free throw shooter. That is the ninth on the Badgers. So still one and one here for Cook. Well, what an impressive performance by this young Duke team. And it is a young team starting three freshmen. They do have some older players. But their best players are their younger guys. And to be able to come into this atmosphere, this is a really difficult place to play. And this is an excellent Wisconsin team. And I would not be surprised to see both of these teams in the Final Four. Jackson driving. And Winslow fouls him right at the rim. Well, Winslow has some things. He got called for a foul there, granted, but, Jay, he's got some things you just can't teach in terms of athleticism. Well, this superior athlete, left-handed. A lot of the NBA people I've talked to have said he reminds them a lot of James Harden. Boy, if that's a foul, that's caught him a little bit with the body. But that's a big-time, big-time athletic play. But one of the NBA guys I talked to said he's James Harden with defense. That's the way he sees him in the future. Didn't have a great game in this one, but certainly made some athletic plays that made you go, wow. And Trayvon Jackson made some plays, period, that made you go, wow. He was terrific. Well, unless they can keep mounting a comeback here, it won't be enough for the Badgers. Got it down to six, but only 43 seconds left as Matt Jones comes into the game now for Duke. And Jefferson sits down. He's looking for a quick steal, maybe a quick trap, and then he got a foul to extend yeah. the game. Mike Krzyzewski with all kinds of ball handlers and good free throw shooters in the game right now. Nearly a steal by Koenig. But Koenig is so quick. And Mike Krzyzewski will use a timeout. If Duke wins this game, Jay, it'll be career win number 991 for Mike Krzyzewski. Number 1,000 is going to come sometime in January. You think they'll give him a nice, like, basketball to commemorate the, the 1,000th? Wow. The difference in this game, in my judgment, has been the dribble penetration of Duke. Being able to go one-on-one -on -one when they've gotten mismatches, they've been able to drive those mismatches. Off the screen roll, the nice step-back dribble by Quinn Cook to drive in the lane with the little floater off, the, off the, the glass. And then when they did draw, help defense, the little drop-off and the easy score by Jalil Okafor. The guards for Duke, Quinn Cook, Tyus Jones, have really controlled this game. And for Duke to come into this building and shoot over 60%, really remarkable. Yep. Those, the three primary guards, Cook, Jones, and Suleiman, 
are 16 for 24 for 44 points. Nobody does that against the Wisconsin Badgers. It's really been a great performance, and you've got to give a lot of credit to Rasheed Suleiman coming off the bench. Yeah. He's played very good defense, and he's done a really good job of driving it and also pulling up for jump shots. Like, the decisions that have been made by the Duke guards in this game have been really, really solid. And they continue to shoot a ridiculous percentage in this game. 65% on the ninth for the Blue Devils. Sports Center live from the Cole Center. Kevin Connors, John Butchergrass immediately following the conclusion of this one. The Big Ten has won the challenge, but here in this huge game, number four and number two, it's the ACC team on the road looking to get out of here with a win as they'll put Suleiman on the free throw line for two. All right, really this ACC Big Ten challenge hadn't been close. I mean, the Big Ten's dominated. Yep. They go back to the beginning of the challenge. The ACC won the first ten. Then the Big Ten won the next three. It's been a tie each of the last two years. And the Big Ten are winning it rather handily here this year. SEC Big 12 challenge kicks in tomorrow night. And again, Friday night, great doubleheader. Texas at Kentucky at 7. And then Florida at Kansas at 9. You know, it's never felt in the second half like Wisconsin's been out of it. But it's never felt like they're right on the verge of taking the lead either. The closest they got was three. But every time they made a little run, either they hurt themselves or Duke just made plays. And really, Wisconsin was never able to get their crowd in it. Yeah. So Which Duke, is shocking here. It is surprising. Yeah. Kaminsky misses. Hayes with a rebound. And draws the foul. You know, talk about a guy who wasn't able to get in the game. You know, I'm not sure we saw the real Nigel Hayes in this ball game. And you give all the credit to Duke for taking him out of it, but he picked up those early fouls, and he was never able to establish anything. A win tonight for Duke will give Mike Krzyzewski a 25-13 and 13 record in top five matchups. 38 games in his career have involved both teams being in the top five. You played in five of them, all in the same season, your senior year back in 86, twice against Carolina, twice against Georgia Tech, and then once against Kansas. I can't remember that far back. <laughs> well, I've got proof that you were there. Because <laughs> it says it right here on this sheet of paper. You won three of those, lost to Carolina, lost to Georgia Tech, avenged both of those games, and then defeated Kansas. And that would have been the, the final four. Now in the semifinal, yeah. right? The national semifinal. Yeah. That, uh, the, the loss against North Carolina was the first game in the Dean Dome. That's how old I am. <laughs> Right there with the ball. That's, that's the player of the game. Tyus Jones has been the player of the game. If you had watched this game not knowing how old these players were, and somebody told you, yeah, he's a freshman, yeah. you wouldn't have believed it. Yeah. He's not played like a freshman. Foul on Gosser. Pretty emotional week, really, for Wisconsin. Their next game, always a hotly contested game. They're going to go down to Milwaukee. They'll play at Marquette on the weekend. Marquette had a, a great showing down in Orlando. Wound up finishing third in that game, beating Georgia Tech in the, the first game, then beat Tennessee for third place after dropping the semifinal to Michigan State. Matt Carlino against Georgia Tech, a guy who started at UCLA, played at BYU, at 38 points in that first game against the Yellow Jackets. The Blue Devils on their way to a very impressive road win here in Madison. Led by their guards. Koenig pulls up for a three. And here comes Quinn Cook. And Jackson will foul him with 11 seconds to go. And Tyus Jones, the freshman from Minnesota, playing the point guard position. He moved Quinn Cook over the two guards, pulling up from distance. Attacking off the dribble in transition and finishing over size. And then if you have those arms down, back up just a little bit, he pulls up. And geez, now they're, now they're getting in a, a huddle and slapping the floor. <laughs> New floor slapping techniques by Duke. How about the last two games for Tyus Jones over a good Army team on the weekend? And 20-point win for Duke. Jones had 16 points, 10 assists, no turnovers. Tonight... 
22 points, four assists, and one turnover. The assist to turnover ratio for Cook and Jones is ridiculous this year. And this is going to do it. The Duke Blue Devils come into Madison, subdue the crowd, subdue the Badgers. And the number four team of the nation emerges with an 80-70 to 70 road win to up their record to 8-0 and hand the Badgers their first loss of the season. Well, Duke came into this game with a great game plan. The switching defensively, I thought, really disrupted Wisconsin on its offensive end. And there was never a time where Wisconsin really adjusted and was able to take advantage of it. They were led by Tyus Jones with 22. Suleiman, Okafor, Quinn Cook also in double figures for the Blue Devils who finish off the night shooting 65% of the game as they defeated Wisconsin 80-70 to in a very impressive performance for any team, especially that for a team that starts three freshmen making their first appearance in a true road game. The final score, the Duke Blue Devils 80, the Wisconsin Badgers 70. For Jay Billis, I'm Dan Schulman. Thanks for watching. Sports Center is here. Sports Center is now. Let's toss it to the other side of the court to Kevin Connors and John Butchergrass.